Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Bison Workshop, I'm Bob, and now we're back on the trailer. Uh, this will be part two of the boat trailer modifications to make a flatbed trailer. Um, I went yesterday and got the uh, boards for the uh, trailer floor. Uh, they are treated two by sixes, and um, I've lined them all up, and I'm a little short of using a full nine board, and I knew that uh, to start with when I added it up, uh, 48 inches takes eight and a piece of a two by six. So that's why that one over there is leaning up. Uh, basically what I'm gonna have to do is take this board over to the bench, uh, clamp it down, <coughs> and strike me a line the length of the uh, two by six, and then we're gonna put it in the center. So we're gonna have four, four full ones on each side of the center one. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started on that, uh, cutting that board down so that we can make them all fit. And then once I've got the uh, that one there in the center, then I'll take and cut the uh, length off. And it's not gonna be a full, I don't think it, I'm gonna do a full eight foot. It would be nice if I had a full eight foot but that means that I would have to move the toolbox up because where the end of the boards go is where the first beam goes across and then the tongue welds to it. Um, I may do that just to add more here, this much more up front. It'd give me a longer uh, trailer by about, I don't know, it looks like about eight inches. I may, I may do that, but um, just wanted to show you the progress of this, and I've decided to go ahead and take these sidebars off and just leave it as a regular flat trailer and be done with it. Uh, I've got some hooks that came off of the boat that I can use for hooking some kind of a tie down. I think they're big enough for a hook in a uh, ratchet strap to go in. If not, then I'll have to probably make some tie downs for it. Uh, but anyway, let's get started on cutting that board down to width. Well guys, change of plans. I decided to use a two before in the place, so I had to go to Lowe's and get another two before that's treated. I had one that was not treated, so I didn't want to mix uh, treated and a non-treated. So it fit perfect with the two before. So we got eight two by sixes, four on each side of the two before, and I think that'll work just fine. So I guess now the next step is to mark where we're going to cut them and uh, I think what I'm going to do is take this part here and put it right to the end of the trailer and wherever that goes we'll cut the um, this part here off so that'll be cut at an angle and then we'll move the toolbox forward and uh, that'll give me an extra six to eight inches on my trailer length. So um, we're gonna move all these forward and make our marks and go ahead and cut them. So basically we're just gonna slide these forward to the edge. I think 
that's where I'm going to leave it, right there. And I'm just going to put my row of bolts here. My row of bolts in the center one and the row of bolts in the front one. So now i got to mark the bottom and, and then flip them. Once I've marked the bottom, that way I know where to drill. And we're just going to drill a hole and we're going to use two and a half inch uh, carriage bolts with the round tops and the square shank and uh, put them down with nuts and bolts. So we'll, uh, it's getting pretty late tonight so um, I got started way too late and uh, we'll start this again tomorrow. Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Bison Workshop, I'm Bob, <coughs> and today we're going to go ahead and get back started on the, uh, the uh, trailer. Um, I've got everything laid out, and now what we got to do is, now that I've got them set where I want them, i got to go underneath and take a pencil and draw where the beams go across, which is every four foot. There's three of them, the last one, the middle one, and the end one. And um, we're just going to draw us a line across the side of each beam, and that'll give us our mark where our, our bolts are going to go. So uh, when I get done, there's going to be three lines on this. Two or yeah, three lines. It's going to be two here. No, I'm sorry, five lines. It's going to be two lines here that's going to mimic the beam. We're going to have two lines here that mimic that beam. And then we're going to have one line back here because you're only going to be drawn on one side. So once I've got those lines drawn, then we'll just come over here, flip these the other way. So the bottom will be the top, and we'll start drilling in between those lines that we drew. So the hardest part is making sure that you're straight down through the wood. So we're going to go ahead and get started on drawing those lines. Now I'm going to draw the lines off camera because I'm not going to put you guys underneath this trailer, and I'm not. It's just a fight. So. Once I've got the lines drawn, I'll flip them, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll be ready to start drilling. All right, now we've got the lines drawn across there. I've got one in the middle. These two indicate the, um, the beams, and since the C channel runs this way we have the thickness of the C channel minus and that will put that in the center <clears throat> so I've offset this so that when I go to put my nut on I'm not going to be running into the side beam so we're kind of in between the flat area so that puts us right in the middle so I've done that to all three of them this one here is a little more off than the other one and then this one here is just a little bit off because as you can see the C channel runs this way so we want to minus the thickness of this and then put our line accordingly so uh, now all we got to do is drill our holes put our bolts in so as soon as I get set up for that, we'll get started on that. Alright, now we're going to screw my trailer.
getting ready to pour the rain down again. Leaves are turning, cloudy over, wind blowing. Nothing out of the ordinary around here. All right, we've got the deck bolted down. All the way across, all three. And then we got the back. All right, while I was doing that, I noticed another problem with this trailer that needs to be addressed. And I'll show you what that is. We got a new, new set of tars coming for it. Well, they're in here, we got them. Uh, 13 inch tars, radials, got paint for it. But while I was putting the boards on, I noticed that right there. It's that way on both sides. So we need to replace that axle, the whole axle, all the way across. What they done right there where you see it stepped down in the middle, they put a solid piece of steel in it. We don't know how far it goes, but I got five foot of it, of the solid one inch steel bar, square bar, and then this tube is real thin and we're going to replace this, but I'm not real sure I'm going to put a solid bar in it. We may, I don't know yet. But, because that's so thin, I went and got a six foot piece of this, and that's a whole lot thicker. And this piece here, will slide up in there, just like so, all right? Now, I'm not real sure we need this solid steel in there. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this yet. I won't know until I get the axle out and uh, we're gonna have to make a new axle. Well, because of that job, that led to me having to get another tool. So we got an upcoming unboxing coming sometime in the near future. Um, a stick slash TIG welder, and I should have it tomorrow. <clears throat> yes. Harbor Freight. I don't know where else to get one any cheaper, but we're gonna try to uh, try it out and see if it works, and um, go from there. Uh, I wasn't expecting to do all this work on it. Uh, I was expecting to put a floor on it, paint it, put a toolbox on it, and be done with it but because the axle is froze and busted and busted out, I decided to just go on and put a new axle under. So we're gonna take the spindle out of these axles and put in the new axle and use my new stick welder whenever I get rods, because I've done exhausted all my money getting the, getting the welder. Uh, it's a, like I said, Harbor Freight and it's uh, uh, 40 uh, 40 percent um, uh, I'm not sure how to put it uh, the duty duty cycle is 40 percent uh, the other one is cheaper is like only 20 percent so I figured why not go with the uh, 40 percent duty cycle um, I don't know much about what the the uh, specs are on what I actually need, I just have to do trial and error, um, and I hope that the trial and error works in my favor. So, 
we know that we have to put a new axle in it. Uh, the floor's done. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna polyurethane it or not, the deck, uh, simply because I don't wanna create myself a new maintenance on it by having to scrape and paint every couple years. Um, these are treated lumber, so it should last pretty good. All right, the next thing after we make the axle, I gotta cut this piece off of the toolbox because there's not one on the other side and we don't need it anyway. So we gotta cut that off and then I gotta replace the bottom in this because the bottom is so rusted out, there really ain't no bottom in it. All right, then we're gonna take and we're gonna try to either get this one loose. They've welded it in these two holes here and these two holes here. I don't know if I can cut that off right there and take it into the mill and mill those out and save this and then we're going to cut this down a little shorter uh, long enough that when I need to do a, uh, a real sharp turn that my bumper is not going to be going into the uh, toolbox so we got to do some measuring on that and figure out where our pivot point is going to be once we figure out where our pivot point is then we'll add that to where I cut it and um, that's another thing that needs to be done I may live with how long that is I just don't like it being that long I don't know yet until the fat lady sings when she starts singing then we know what's going on but that's going to end part two. Oh, one more thing here I had originally thought I was going to get rid of these poles. I'm not so sure. They may work in my favor. Um, I was going to take them off and simply because I didn't want to be walking by it and catching my arm on these. But these can be moved down lower and put right here for the taillights. Um, then again, I don't, I'm not sure I like the taillights below the bed or below this part because if you do bottom out right here, there goes your taillight. So I may try to figure out, I may just take this off, cut it straight across at that angle right there, and then take this one and put it on the inside of the other side right here. I don't know yet uh, how we're going to do that. We will get it. We just don't know how it's going to happen yet. But I had thought about using these by putting a board straight across from here over to the other one, uh, the two by six that I have left, and leave these on there because I am going to put a gate on this that will come down so that I can uh, roll things up on the trailer so that's going those may act as a uh, a latch for the gate so we may go ahead and leave that exactly the way it is um, it's, it's not that I don't think it's that big of a deal especially since I'm going to be taking this off it's going to make it shorter so it's not going to be really all that bad at bad a deal so um, I guess that'll end part two of the trailer build so you guys uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, we're gonna try to get part three up soon it's gonna be a while I got a deck to build that I just showed you all yesterday and uh, I did get the building done. In fact, you know what? Let me just go on and show you that building. So let's take a walk around here. And show you the building. That'll finish the building build. All right. 
there it is. Now, the doors slide pretty good. You know, uh, they do slide pretty good. They're not as bad as I thought they were gonna be. And we got the inside done and cleaned out and it's ready for her to use. And, you know, it's a pain in the ass to put together. It's not a bad little building. If you do buy one of these, you do want to build a real floor with real floor joists and then set this on it. That way you can keep it nice and level and it ain't going to go anywhere. Uh, and it will raise it up a little bit. There are several things I don't like about these, and that's the floor frame, uh, the height of the door. You know, it makes no sense to have a door that you have to bend over to get into. That's, that's bullshit. You know, it's bad enough that you got a bad back, but you go having to bend over with weight on you, trying to carry something heavy in there or out of there, you're going to hurt yourself. So, you know, that, that's one thing that I don't like about these buildings is the fact that they have a low door. All right, they did change the roof design. Uh, it does have a bigger pitch, a taller pitch. So, you know, that's, that's an up, upgrade that I guess they've uh, decided to do. Because the building I have, it, it doesn't have that big of a pitch. All right. They had a trim that goes on the edge of this right here, but it mounts right across here. As you can see, you got screw holes right here for those little L brackets. It's just an L that comes down and, and straight down. The problem with that is it goes across right here, and this here is a perfect place for snow to set and start building up and I mean these buildings ain't that tough to begin with so you don't want anything hindering the snow let so that the snow will come sliding off you know instead of collecting right here so I decided not to put that on there so uh, other than that thing looks pretty good uh, you know, the dents in it, I didn't put any of these dents in it, I promise, I wouldn't lie to you. I'm an honest man. Uh, you know, all those were in the box, just like that. I guess from the forklift. But um, this time I'm, I'm done with this video, so uh, you guys have a good one. Later.